Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Our guild was only three hours away from our raid finishing when Chapter 2 dropped. So we're all getting into this right now. I'm going to go through a few battles here, see if we can work out what we need to do in this chapter to make it work and get the most amount of points out of it. So first thing we want to do is take a quick look and see how we're meant to score points in this particular chapter of the raid. And you can see here that the main way you're going to score points is by toppling that troll. Once you do topple him, you're going to have to try and get his health down to zero to get those extra bonus points. It does also look like he will summon some other guards to try and help him out there and disrupt the whole process. When he does that, they're not really worth a great deal of points. So let's try and focus on topping this troll and doing as much damage as humanly possible to him. So I'm going to start out with the Haradrim since they are touted as one of the teams to really dominate in this phase of the raid. So what I'm going to do as we go along in this battle, I'm going to point out a couple of key things that you're going to need to know. You can see the buff that's starting to appear above the troll. That is his momentum. That's really going to speed him up. He's going to start doing a lot of damage to you the more that builds up. The way that you need to control that is by hitting him with critical hits. Every critical hit will reduce that. What the Haradrim also bring is that Black Serpent's Poison, which you can just see as the debuff on the left at the top there. So every time he gets a buff, that will turn it into poison. So you can see that starting to take effect there. Unfortunately, I don't have the abilities of the Haradrim really well fleshed out at the moment, so you're not going to see the full potential of this team. I'm still starting to really get an idea of how they function, but you can start to get an idea of what you're supposed to do with them. It's just a matter of getting that Black Serpent's Poison to stick, but also those critical hits. So the more that you can build up abilities so that you can be doing more damage, the more effective you're going to be against the troll. He does seem to be able to resist a lot of things that you throw at him, which is why the Haradrim are going to be a lot more effective with that Black Serpent's Poison. It's just a matter of getting that to stick. I am currently doing this on difficulty level 2. Depending on how I go, if I can get past that 100,000 point mark, then this is the perfect level for them at the moment. Otherwise, I might have to drop back to level 1 and just try and get those maximum points out of level 1. Just like everything though, resources really are an issue with building this team up. Not only the ability mats, but also your gear, your XP, gold, all that sort of stuff is really going to take its time to be able to develop this team the way that it needs to function. I've almost lost Robel at the moment here will try and heal but again unfortunately I'm just not able to do a lot of healing there would better he is gone he's out of here but we are chipping away at him are we gonna topple him anytime soon there he goes he's toppled okay now you see he pulls in two other orcs to help him out here but what we're gonna do we're just gonna focus on the troll if we can try and get him down to that zero health mark so that we can get those bonus points i've lost two guys so it doesn't make it very easy to do that extra damage so we're probably not going to last too much longer here we don't really have the aoe's to take out the orcs as well as damage the troll at the same time here so yeah they're just going to have to see what we can get we're not quite going to get the hundred thousand Maybe with a few attempts, I might get a little bit better. I might be able to do a little bit more work on the Haradrim there. But let's move on to Elrond and his Rivendell team. This is probably the team that I do have fleshed out the most as far as abilities are concerned. I've only got two of them at gear level 8. The others are at gear level 7. We still seem to be struggling to do a lot of those critical hits. So he is building up that momentum pretty quickly. This one is being done on level 3 difficulty, so we're aiming to get over that 300,000 mark. Let's see if we can put a slow on him. No, that doesn't seem to want to stick this time. 
but the best thing about Elrond and his team is they can survive the battle very quickly. But just while I'm on this topic here, when you're talking about this not being a free-to-play team, just be aware that today Arwen has been made farmable. Shadow 5-5 five, five hard, you will be able to farm her now. That will be able to give you those five elves that you can farm at least up to that five-star level. Hopefully Elrond will return soon. I would assume that given Arwen is now farmable that Elodin won't be too far behind and probably on a similar hard node that it's going to take a while to be able to farm. But that's great news for all the free-to-play players out there. You can get Elrond ready and that way when that event does drop you'll be able to get Elrond unlocked for yourself, at least at five stars. If you have been farming the other elves, there's a good chance you will be able to get that seven star Elrond on your first attempt, which is great for everybody. Okay, so we've nearly got this troll toppled by the looks of it. There we go, he is down. We've got the supports coming in here. I have saved some of the big shots so that way we can try and take him out while he is down. A couple of AoEs would have been great here to try and get those side orcs out nice and early. But we're just going to have to deal with them as we go. Lots of counterattacks happening there on those orcs which is great to see. We're just going to top up our health a little bit here because when he wakes up he's going to start doing a lot of damage. And it looks like one of those side orcs does have a taunt, which is really, really annoying. Arwen was just one move too late there to be able to cleanse that off him. But at least we can focus directly on the troll now. We're going to try and get that slow to take effect. No, he resisted it again. That is unfortunate because I do have that move maxed out. So that would slow him for two turns. Now look at that massive amount of damage that this troll is just going to do. It's going to be very difficult to knock him down a second time. So if you don't get those bonus points on the first attempt, you're going to really struggle to get another crack at him when he gets knocked down. But we're going to try anyways. I'm not really doing the sort of damage that I thought I'd be able to do with the elves here. Unfortunately, he does seem to be quite tanky. But what I do want you guys to try and do is try out those higher difficulty levels, especially when it comes to the team that you do have fleshed out the most, because you want to try and beat that 300,000 mark. So try and do difficulty level three. It's going to benefit you as far as your personal rewards are concerned. It's going to be better for your guild. You're going to be able to beat those chapters a lot faster, the more points that you can put on the board. And the best thing is, if it doesn't work out so great, you can always just drop back to that previous level, try again, and you can just put whatever you can put on the board for the level that you can work at. Looks like I'm going to top out here somewhere between 275 and 280,000. Not a bad first attempt, but I do think that I can do a little bit better if I can eliminate him while he is down. That taunting orc is just the wrong random orc to show up at the time. But that looks to be about it for that run. 275. I know I can do better than that. I'm not going to bank those points. I'm going to run the Road to Rivendell team. Now, this is only Chapter 1. I don't have these guys very well built up at all. So you're not going to see the best out of them. What I would suggest is with Strider's AoE, make sure you save that for when you get those other orcs that show up when you topple the troll, just to try and take them out a little bit faster. You really want to focus all your attention on the troll there. If you have put a lot of effort into these guys, I still think they're going to be pretty effective on chapter 2 as they were in chapter 1. So if you're really looking for a free to play light side team to invest in, this is 100% the team that you should be looking at because you're going to be able to use them very well in the arena. You're going to be able to use them in both of these ch first two chapters for the raid. And look at this, I'm actually looking like I am going to get that health down to zero. He does wake up straight away, 
but you get those bonus points. Not sure if I will be able to knock him down again. As you've seen in the past couple of runs, he does get very, very tough after you topple him that first time. We still have those orcs on the side that we've got to deal with, which is just going to make it a little bit tougher here. Like I said, I don't really have a lot invested in their abilities, so I'm not going to be doing a huge amount of damage. But on difficulty one, it doesn't look like it's really going to make that much difference. You should be able to deal with them easy enough if you have to. Some of the other teams that might work pretty well, obviously you've got Bolg with his Misty Mountains team. Even the Goblins might be decent in this chapter of the raid. But I think Isengard, Mordor even, because Mordor can do a bit of AoE damage as well. So they'd be able to deal with those extra orcs that do show up there but some of those teams are really good at the critical damage and they do have a lot of debuffs that they can put on the troll to try and rein him in just a little bit so if you do have those teams built up let me know in the comments below how you went with some of your teams what kind of results were you getting on different difficulties how well have you got those teams fleshed out just so we can get a little bit more of an understanding of what works and what doesn't. I have actually toppled him a second time here, which is really good, but unfortunately I've lost most of the team, so it's not really going to help too much. I don't know that I'll be able to finish him off here. He's going to wake up. He's going to destroy me. But the good thing is that I did get a fair way through if I had have been able to topple him and defeat him again. Just that little bit more survivability on those hobbits would have been a little bit better but definitely make sure that you're building up that road to rivendell team it's going to serve you well all through this game but that's it for this one guys don't forget like and sub you know the deal we've got plenty more heroes of middle earth coming your way don't miss out and we'll catch you in the next one